In this episode, we take a look at a question from a student in my Spring Boot introduction course. If you'd like to learn everything you need to know about developing Spring Boot applications, please use the coupon code below for 50% off. And with that, let's take a look at the question. All right, so the question is, hi, how can I ask how can I access these properties from a single YAML properties file in the data source config? Thanks. So basically what the student has here is they have a YAML file and they have some pro uh, settings that look like this. They have environments and then under environments they have development and for development they have a name and a URL of their data source. And then in another one they have production and they have name and URL of a production data source. What they're trying to do is set up a data source config bean and basically they have two beans here, one for, pro, one for the development profile and one for the production profile. So first off, you're on the right path, but there's a couple things I would change. Um, first, for me, I always create new um, files based on, new properties files based on the environment that I'm in. So I may have something like application dash development dot yaml and that may be my development properties file that I would use and the reason I do that is because when we have like a production file uh, properties file we're not going to have that checked into source control and so we may have a properties that are production stuff that we don't want every developer to have access to so that that is kind of configured elsewhere so that's kind of my approach to that, but we can still take your approach and and fix this. So as far as the way you have this set up, I would just change this a little. I'm going to open my YAML file here, and if we use these three little uh, dashes here, it's kind of like creating a new file. So here we're setting our profile active to development, and in this one we have our spring profiles for development, and now we have a data source property and under there we have a data source dot name and a data source URL and then we have this other divider and then we have our profile for production so with this setup we can kind of uh, use what you're talking about but we also can simplify this when we're only changing something like a URL or a name there's no need to have two different bean definitions here we can just get the URL based on the profile that we're using and then pass that in and create our bean. So let's take a look at how to do that. I got a config folder here. I'm going to create a new class and we'll call this data source config. And this is going to be a configuration class. So let's go ahead and annotate it with that. So we are going to have a private string um, name and a private string URL. Those are going to be our properties that we want in our configuration class. Finally, we're going to have a data source. Um, so I've actually created a data source already. If you look at domain, really just a simple class that has a URL and a port. Um, probably should have a name too. Private string name. Okay, so there's our name, URL, and port. Um, I don't know why we had port. I think he had port in his specific example, but we'll just get rid of that for now. So we have our name and our URL. So now if we go back to our data source config, we're going to return a type data source, and we'll call this data source. And in here, we're going to basically create a new instance so we'll say return new data source and we're gonna include a name so we would say name and URL URL and that would create our new instance so now we need to get the values for name and URL right and the way that we're gonna do that is by using at value and the way that we're going to get the one that we need is we are already in the active profile. So right now, 
with it being set to development, we're going to get our development profile. And we can just go in and say, I want to get the data source dot name for this one. And just the same here, we can say, I want to get the data source dot URL for this one. So now because we're in the development profile, let's go back. Because we're in the development profile, all we're doing is accessing the data source dot name property or the data source dot URL property. So now we have our two properties. Based on the profile, it's going to pass in the correct one and then create us, create us a new instance of data source. So let's go ahead and run this in debug mode. And when this fires up, we should see our correct values because we're using development. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run this. And when it fires up here, oh, we're at our home controller. Whoops. Oh, sorry. So I was missing one thing. Um, so right now, this configuration class um, is a beam, but we actually need to um, define our bean here for our data source. So we're just going to say bean name, um, we'll just call it app bean. So now if we go ahead and rerun this, when the application fires up and we create that bean, we should be able to see our name and our URL there. Okay, so if we look at that, our name is development setup and our URL is the dev one. Of course, if we went into um, our application.yaml and changed this to production and reran the application, we would get the values that we're looking at here. So I hope that helped. Uh, thanks again for the question. It was a good one. Uh, we know there's a lot of different ways to set properties in Spring Boot applications. So with all these different uh, methods and, and ways to do it, it can be confusing at times. So again, thank you so much for the question. And if you have a question, please leave it below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one.